Hi hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about using PPSSPP on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So PPSSPP is the very popular Sony PlayStation Portable Game Emulator and this can be run on the Mac operating system. So I'm just going to show you how it's done. So I'm on the PPSSPP.org website and if I click on download here, we get to the various versions and operating systems that this particular emulator has been compiled for. So we have Android up here, Windows, and th these are the probably the most popular one is the, the Windows build of this particular emulator. So that's the, probably the most up-to-date version. And then we have the iOS version, and then we have the macOS version here. And this says no currently available builds, you have to build from source. We do have lots of other builds that are available, but it seems that for some reason, they don't automate the builds for the Mac OS version of this particular emulator. Now, it is actually possible to run PSP games without actually doing any compiling using uh, something like OpenMU, which I've done a video about before. So OpenMU is a front end for multiple emulators, and so it actually uses PPSSPP as a back end for the Sony PlayStation Portable emulation. However, the settings behind the actual emulator itself are kind of hidden and you can't change things like the internal resolution. That's quite important because it looks quite ugly as a, at the 1x resolution and there are also several fixes you might need to apply which you can't really access using this front end. There's also RetroArch as well, which also uses PPSSPP as a backend core. Uh, however, I'm going to be covering this in a future video. Today, I'm just going to be talking about how to actually compile PPSSPP for the Mac operating system and to get it to work on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the first thing that we're going to do is to install Homebrew on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And this is actually fairly straightforward compared to how it used to be when the M1 Apple chips were first released. All we need to do is to go to this brew.sh website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And then once we have this open, we're going to open Terminal. So we're going to click on Spotlight in the top right hand corner and type in the word Terminal and press enter. And then I have my terminal window open here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find this command here and then click on the copy button. And then I'm going to paste this here. So you can actually right click and paste or command V to paste this command. And I'm just gonna press enter. And what this is gonna do is to download the homebrew package manager. I'm gonna type in my password now. So what this is just telling us now is that it's going to install these various parts of homebrew and that these new directories will be created. I'm gonna press return again to confirm. This will just take a little bit of time to actually download all the software that we need. So just give it a few minutes. Okay, so Homebrew is finally installed. And as you can see, it took several minutes for it to finish. So just be patient and wait for this command prompt to come back and then you'll be able to continue to the next step. So despite the fact that Homebrew is installed, the actual brew commands won't be found. So what you'll need to do is to enter this command. So this actually comes up, but if you've closed that window and you need this again, I'll just leave a command in the description or a link to this Stack Overflow page. I'm just gonna press enter here and that's going to write that command. So now when we type in brew, it's going to give us the list of options that we need. So now that we've successfully installed Homebrew and that the brew path commands have all been fixed, all we need to do now is to actually install PPSSPP. So all we need to do is to type in the word brew, install PPSSPP, and then enter. So once PPSSPP is actually installed, you'll be returned to this command prompt here. So that means you'll know that it's finished its process. It'll take quite a while to download. And then we actually need to find the PPSSPP application. And what we do is we go to Finder and we're going to look for this particular folder. And that's not normally found in the actual user folders itself. We need to actually manually go into Finder, click on go to folder. And then what we can do is type forward slash opt and then we're gonna get into the opt folder and then we can see the homebrew folders here. And then we have the seller, which is where the stuff is downloaded. And then we can navigate down to PPSSPP. And then we have 1.11.3 here. And then we have the PPSSPP SDL download right there. You can just drag this into your applications folder to make it easy to find. I'm just going to make a copy of this here. And now I have PPSSPP downloaded there. So if I just look at this actual file here, it is a native Apple Silicon application. So this is the newer build of the PPSSPP. If I open it now, then we're gonna to get to our standard menu here. So I'm just gonna pair my Xbox wireless controller back to my MacBook. 
I can actually control this using my controller now. What we have here is the back end, which is set to OpenGL. There's no Vulkan or Molten VK option here. I'm gonna set the rendering resolution to four times the PSP resolution, which is closest to 1080p. And basically I'm just gonna leave everything else the same. The sound is gonna be coming from my MacBook Air speakers, which is next to my microphone. I basically turned down the volume to quite a low amount and we're just going to test a few games. So I've added these onto my solid state drive by going into the home section here and then going down into the root and then if I go to the volumes here and then I can find my more volume which is my solid state drive here then I've got my PSP ISOs right here in this folder now please make sure that you legally own the games before you make use of any of these backup ISOs or better yet dump your own ISOs once they're in this folder we can actually start playing them so I'm going to load up Tekken 6 first and then I'm just going to load up my state and we're going to continue playing here once we're in the game, we can actually full screen it and we can see a pretty good screen resolution. So the menu is actually quite blurry because no matter how high we increase the internal resolution of the PSP game, the menu items are still rendered in a kind of pixely display. So those aren't three dimensional, so they're not upscaled correctly. But anyway, I'm just going to show some gameplay. Yeah, so it looks pretty good, pretty solid 60 frames per second. Just going to play around and just show you what it looks like. Feels pretty good with a, uh, an actual controller. So all these uh, backgrounds and stuff, they don't look correct, but the 3D stuff has uh, aged really well. So I'm just gonna play another round for you. It's running at 60 frames per second, which is pretty good. Okay, so that was pretty good. I'm just gonna load up a different game now. So let's go to the main menu. Go to games here. Let's load up God of War, Ghost of Sparta. I can see there's some kind of issue playing this cinematic back. So this is like a pre-rendered video. So it's kind of stuttering a little bit. So once we get into the game itself, you can see that this game looks fantastic at the four times PSP resolution. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of gameplay of this opening. So we're sticking with a really solid 60 frames per second here, even though the game is probably one of the most demanding for the PSP. So the game looks and plays great. So the only real issue was that opening cinematic, but the, the actual internal game resolution works fantastically. So we have a bit of a frame drop there as the environment changed quite a lot. So now we're just going to come out of this and go to the main menu and we're going to try a final game, Persona 3 Portable. When we take the internal resolution of the PSP up by four times, then some of the actual animations like this one creates this kind of white line effect. You can fix that just by reducing the internal resolution of the PPSSPP so that it's one times and that won't happen. So I've just loaded up a battle portion of the game, which is being rendered in 3D, unlike the rest of the game, which is more like a two-dimensional background. And it's running pretty solidly at 30 frames per second. I'm aware that there are some ways to make this game look much better using 4K texture mods, which might fix some of the other graphical issues. But uh, this looks pretty good in itself. It shows that this game will perform very nicely on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and uh, it's running at the kind of full frame rate that it's able to do. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If there are any other games that you'd like me to test on the PPSSPP, which has been built natively for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, please leave a comment. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tech video.